All right, so for this first JDM uh, inspired mod, this one's actually gonna save you guys quite a bit of money, especially. This one's actually gonna save you guys quite a bit of money if you guys were looking at uh, doing this particular replacement uh, with some nice quality OE ones. Um, but again, there's a little bit of extra work that you're gonna have to do. So one thing that you're definitely gonna need that I would highly recommend is a body panel removal tool. Usually you can find these online or at your local hardware store like Harbor Freight or whatnot for super cheap. They're usually like 10 bucks for a kit. So it shouldn't be a, you know an expensive cost. And I would always recommend having some of these just in case when it comes to doing some of your installs because they do come in handy. But as you can see, I'm sitting in the uh, passenger side with my feet out the door because the one thing that we're gonna replace is the uh, OE door sills, which uh, it might not be a big deal for some of you guys you might not care but this is actually one of the places where you could add simple dress up for an affordable price and most cars actually have just nicer sills in general um, i have an acura rsx which is actually the base model that has some nice steel ones and then obviously they just get fancier depending on the car so with this one really easy there's actual clips underneath this that are holding it down so that's why you need the body panel removal tool just to basically pry them up and then you just kind of go along the lines and this one we already did so i'm just going to show you real quick and we'll show you the process on the other one but this one's already done so i can show you what it looks like so once they're unclipped you see that this one has one two three four five six seven mounting clips this is essentially what it looks like on the underside these are the uh, oe clips um, and then just the simple veloster logo now I'm sure by now you're wondering, well, how are you going to save me money by doing it the way you're doing it? Well, if you've actually looked in the aftermarket for aftermarket door sills that are metal, uh, they sell some nice silver chrome ones, some light up ones, and some nice black metal ones, uh, but they all run usually about $100 on up. The cheapest ones that I saw that just say like Veloster Turbo run about $70, give or take. So again, that's still kind of an expensive price for some of you guys, just for something as simple as door sills. Because let's be real, for 70 bucks, you could buy a catch can or numerous other mods that are just more valuable to the vehicle. So what I did was I ordered for around $30 straight from Korea and badging uh, door sills. But these are actually OE door sills from the Veloster N. Um, and again, these are super nice. They don't say Veloster at all. They just have the N logo and everything else is like brushed aluminum. Um, so these things cost me, like I said, about 35 bucks with shipping uh, to get them here to the good old US of A. Um, and they're just nicer looking. However, there is a little bit of customization that we're gonna have to do because first and foremost, these are meant for a second gen. So for those of you watching me that have a second gen, this might be as simple as just plug and play for your guys' vehicle. For someone like me that has a first gen, however, these tabs actually don't clip in identical. What we did find out is that the middle clips do clip in the exact same way. It's these side ones over here uh, and back here that don't mount. So what we're gonna have to do is for these end clips, we're gonna have to Dremel them off. So you will require a little of handwork. You're gonna need a Dremel. And on top of that, you're gonna need some double-sided tape because a lot of the aftermarket door sills on sale only use aftermarket tape. So you actually have to remove your OE ones and then essentially rely almost 100% on double-sided tape. So with us, we have a little bit of an edge because we do get to reuse some of these clips. And as you can see, we will end up going down here, aligning it the exact same way. You, you see how it kind of seated itself already almost? It's because these can use, hopefully, we're gonna find out, but we kind of did a test run. We should be able to reuse the three center clips and then everything else will be double-sided tape. So at the very least, you're not gonna be relying only on double-sided tape. So the only other thing to note is that this kit uh, came with only the driver's side and the passenger side. So yeah, the downside is that that third rear door is not gonna have a nice uh, you know, chrome one. But again, it's just kind of a small sacrifice to make. If you really do want that last third one, then you can go with an aftermarket kit. But this is just me showing you a way of adding a little bit of end badging, end style, I guess you could say, to your Veloster second gen or first gen, and saving a lot of money by getting some nice high quality OE ones instead of the uh, typical aftermarket ones. So while Subilu helps me uh, essentially not cut off my fingers with the Dremel, 
Um, another thing that I got asked a lot when I first uh, started doing the uh, the center console stuff, like the shift bushings and the actual uh, shift boot, was why I wasn't buying an aftermarket like weighted uh, shift knob. And I did mention that I kind of really like the design of the stock uh, shift knob that comes on these uh, like 1.5 refresh velocitors. So what I actually ended up doing is this one is an actual true I would say end line because I ended up liking the shifter on the uh, Veloster end so much but I just obviously wasn't a huge fan of the baby blue because it wouldn't match with my color scheme so the i30 uh, end line or the Elantra GT end line that's here in the US um, has little end tidbits um, including a shift knob that is identical to the Veloster end the biggest difference is that it has a red stripe as opposed to the blue. And for those of you saying, why would you go with an OE? You know, why didn't you get a weighted shift knob? These are actually weighted. This is quite heavy. Um, I wish I would have had a little scale to kind of tell you how heavy this thing is. Um, but I, I mean, I don't know, in my hands, I'd say it's a good, like, what do you think, Lou? He's saying 10 grams, I don't know about grams. I'm saying at least, definitely like a pound. Um, so I'll translate that to grams or whatnot, but but it's pretty heavy uh, But the only downside is that the way that these mount in as you can see is this so I'm going to try to figure out how to install this in your typical Veloster or normal Elantra Sport um, And you can hear this guy drumming away So let's figure that out first before I get my hopes up because I really like the shift knob and again, it is weighted, so this should be an interesting little addition for those of you trying to keep with the little OE style. All right, so sit rip on this is that, uh, thanks to the help of Subi Lou, he already dremeled off some of the tabs for the driver side. And now, as you can see, we've already placed a uh, double-sided sticky tape to make sure that the adhesive will obviously stick to where the tabs were. We've only left the three middle tabs intact so the next step is obviously to make sure that you clean this up, which as you can tell, we have. So now we're gonna basically remove the double-sided sticky tape, line it up to these middle tabs as you can see, and keep in mind it is gonna press up against this edge, but once we do that, uh, we will kind of, not hammer it, but just kind of pound it in and then make sure that the tape aligns and we got nicer sills, so let's do that. And update, so we kind of guessed wrong. Out of the three clips, the only usable ones were the actual two center middle ones. So the third top one that should be up here, we actually also had to dremel off. But at the very least, it clipped into place the two centers and everything else as you saw is double-sided sticky tape. So forgive me for the uh, dremeling sound in the background. But look. Sorry. It's beautiful. Again, these shouldn't be going anywhere. And then look, closes like nothing. So again, nice project overall. Now we're going to obviously Dremel the passenger side and start removing that and see where we'll mount that. All right, for those of you guys that were squeamish on this and I you know, didn't show you, see how it literally just slid underneath and you should hear a clip. And then after that, literally it's just pull. Whoa, oh, there we go. And then this one has a total of seven. So three clips holding the outside, three on the outside here, and then one right here in the center where my thumb is at. So we'll clean this up, figure out how to line up against the, uh, the end ones, and we'll go from there. All right, so a bit of a mess here. This is an update on the shift knob that I thought would be a little easier. So this right here is the uh, aftermarket, well, not the aftermarket, the stock uh, Veloster, i30 end line shift knob as you can tell by the red accent this is identical to the Veloster N. the difference is that they have the little blue stripe so as much as i like the color scheming um this portion at the bottom is just non-removable there's really no way because it's all part of the actual shift knob um and i know i said that this is a little weighted actually so is the stock one it's got a little bit of weight to it um all is not lost because realistically, I'm not gonna lie to you, I know it's gonna sound stupid, but the biggest thing that I wanted was the uh, end logo the most. Um, so, to not waste money, what I did was, there's a screw down there, the center where the hole is in here. You can tell, you remove that screw, you also remove this little screw holding the red tab. What that does is, literally, 
releases this top portion because there's nothing else holding it down. For the stock uh, Veloster one, same thing as you can tell, there's a screw in there. You remove that and this cap comes right off. Now, this is what we had to do to make things work. As you can see on this shift knob right here, there's a little tiny gap. That gap is because the cap has a lip right here. It's practically gone because what we did was we shaved it down with the Dremel. And essentially what we had to do is the screw, this one right here in my fingers, the one that was in here, we actually used in the old knob because believe it or not, for whatever reason, I thought they were the same size screw, but it looks like the stock one from the, uh, from the base model, my, well, the R-Spec is a little bigger. So the screw from the uh, first gen was a little bigger than the screw from the uh, Veloster N and I30N shift knob. So we used the screw from this one after dremeling the slip a little bit, we reused it here, tightened it up, and now we have the same shift knob, but with the end cover completely flush. And because again, this is a screw on type uh, shift knob as opposed to, uh, I mean, I really don't know what this is. It looks like it's just a clip on style. So if you really want that end badge or you wanna you know, make your own kind of shift knob um, with some sort of end accenting and a new look, this is probably the easiest way to go. Is it a waste of about 30 bucks? Maybe, depends on the way you see it. I mean, yeah, it's a waste because this does have nice little per perforation or, you know, breathability, whatnot. And yeah, we don't get the little colored accents anymore. Believe me, I tried to see if there was any way to retrofit it and really there's not. So we at least got to keep the cap. We're gonna screw this back on and put it in and just see how much little extra flare we were able to get away with by doing the uh, shift knob. And obviously, as you've seen before, the uh, Veloster N door sills. All right, so an update. We actually ended up only keeping two tabs, as you can see. Not even the first tab on the uh, that side, but just one right there. I can bring it up a little bit. So not this one, but this one right here. And then literally the last tab over here, we had to remove the little outside part. And then everything else is just gonna be double-sided tape, um, mainly because of the curvature um, and because the length is slightly longer. So yeah, uh, I was fooled. It looked like it's gonna be a really close fit, but it was not. So now we're just gonna place it and wait for it to uh, stick on. All right, so now that the work's done and we've given it a little while for the adhesive, the double-sided tape to stick on and you know make sure that the uh, lining right here, the weather stripping is all good to go. Let's start peeling the protective film. All right, so all in all, we did some new small custom little mods. Um, obviously the shift knob, for those of you that want like a serious weighted knob, um, you're gonna be looking at anywhere from $60 up, depending on if you get a, you know, uh, mass made one from like DC Sports or Sparco or things like that. Or if you decide to go custom from one of the retailers like Sixth uh, Element Engineering, um, to name a few, obviously. Um, so yeah, you can obviously get uh, more customized ones and whatnot, but again, for 30 bucks, um, essentially being able to kind of make my own little and shift knob especially to kind of go with the theme of the car um i kind of like it again it saved me a little bit of money for those of you guys that can't afford a full-on shift knob like i said they're pretty cheap and you might be able to find one uh you know like secondhand used for about the same price but uh, this is unique to me so i'm quite happy with it and this is just a kind of diy for those of you guys that might have been interested like me in getting an end style shift knob um this is what you could do as long as you have a uh you know circular i'd say the uh revision um veloster shift knob 
uh, and obviously for the for the manual guys as well. Um, the door sills came out amazing. Uh, that'll save you tons of money if that's what you're looking at. This cost me about 35 bucks for shipping, as opposed to buying even the cheapest ones. Like I said, I found that say Veloster Turbo were like $80. So again, as long as you have a few resources, uh, these are relatively all of this stuff is really easy to do, and it was quite fun. Like I said, I added a little bit of N line uh, performance parts or flavor to the uh, to the build. So yeah, I'm happy. But guys, as always, that concludes this video. Thanks so much to Subi Lu once again for always helping out, especially because you know he provides a nice, safe work environment despite all the cars driving by and the birds and <laughs> everything. I'm just completely kidding, guys. Uh, but huge shout out to him. If you guys haven't checked him out, here's his uh, Instagram since he's not doing uh, YouTube as much anymore. So you can follow him. He's been doing some amazing photography. We're waiting on a few other things to uh, come in uh, because my like rework after the small accident is almost complete. And I can't wait to show you guys kind of the complete finished look. I know I've been kind of teasing little things that I've done to it here and there uh, with the build process, but I can't wait to show you guys actual professional pictures done by Subi Lu. Hopefully we'll have a nice recap video of, you know, the, uh, I guess you could call it my 2.0 revision of the vehicle. Uh, but as always guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for all the love and support. If you guys have suggestions on what you might like to see next or see us kind of tackle, seeing if we could do it, let me know in the comments down below. If you liked it, obviously you know what to do. Uh, let me know. Hopefully this was helpful for some of you guys. Um, but as always, as repetitive as I am, thank you guys. Thank you so much for all the love and support and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Um, another thing that I got is I got...